Hey guys, my name is Michelle and I'm from STEM Scopes and I just have so much energy today. I just got back from a great run and I just can do anything. It's a gorgeous day here. So do you ever wonder where all that energy is that you have? Where does it come from? Well, you know, it comes from the food that you eat, which is stored inside of you as potential energy. And then when you start moving, running, that is energy of motion. That's called kinetic energy. So kind of like a basketball. If I were to hold this basketball here, it has potential energy. And then when I drop it, that would be kinetic energy, energy of motion. The same is true of my rubber band. If I take my rubber band and I stretch it, that would have potential energy. And then when I shoot it, that would be kinetic energy, energy of motion. You know what I wonder? I wonder if speed, not the fastest runner in the world, wonder if speed affects the amount of kinetic energy. Huh. I say we do an investigation and find out. Guys, so we're going to go ahead and put together uh, an experiment to see what the relationship is between kinetic energy and speed. So the first thing I'm going to need to think about in my data, so what kind of data am I going to collect? So we obviously have to have some kind of motion, right? So we're going to have to have like walking, running, things that you would do at different speeds. So then after I have motion, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have to determine the time. Like what is the time it takes in order because, and that's going to help me calculate my speed for me to do that motion. Then I need a distance that I'm going. So I'm going to have to have a distance in there. And then I'm going to have to have calculate speed. And then mass is involved. So I'll have mass. And then I will be able to calculate kinetic energy. So I'm going to create my data table with these items. And so the different motions I can do is I can walk. What else can I do? I can um, walk heel toe. And then I can run. And that's three different motions I'm doing that should create three different speeds. Uh, we'll have to calculate our time, so we'll have to go outside and I'll have to walk, go walk, heel, toe, and run, and then calculate time. Distance, we want that to be the same consistent, so we're going to use, I'm going to use 10 meters for my distance. So it'll be 10 meters for each motion. And then we will have to calculate speed, and that's going to be in seconds, and my distance is in meters. And then the mass, I want to keep my mass consistent because today, remember, what are we looking for? A relationship between speed and kinetic energy, not mass. So my mass will be the same. So I'm going to use 50 kilograms for my mass. And then I'll have to go ahead outside now and we'll have to go run our trials. We'll have three different trials. All right, see you soon. Hey guys, I have my notebook with our data table that we put together so I can collect my data right here. So you're going to want to repeat this. You're going to want to have your notebook with you so you can record your data. I have my cone set up with my 40 steps in between, which is approximately 10 meters. And I'm going to go ahead and run through our trials. So the first one, if you remember, is I'm going to walk. And I have my timer right here. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and now I'm gonna walk uh, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. So let's see. Hey, predict. Do you think it's gonna be faster or slower than my first walk? Ready? Yep. Okay, and finally, I'm gonna run. Remember, same distance, 10 meters every time.
go ahead and start my calculations. And let's see, is there a relationship between speed and kinetic energy? Hi everyone, so now we're back and we can calculate our data that we collected from outside. I simply took what we wrote in our notebook and I put it onto a whiteboard so everybody can see it at the same time. So once again, our column, just going over a data table, were our different motions, walk, heel, toe, and run. Our times that it took us to go 10 meters, which was consistent, that's why it's an orange. Um, speed, I calculated our speed, we're gonna talk about that in one second. And then we had the same kilogram mass for each one, and then we calculated our kinetic energy. So the first thing I had to do with the data we collected from outside was calculate speed. So speed is distance over time, so that would be 10 meters over six seconds, which gave me a speed of 1.66 meters per second. Then I calculated the speed of when I walked heel toe, and I took 10 meters divided by 30 seconds, and that gave me 0.33 meters per second. And then finally my running, which was three seconds, so 10 divided by three, and I got 3.33 meters per second. So as you can see, where is my greatest speed? My greatest speed is here when I was running. So remember, we're looking for a relationship between speed and kinetic energy. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at my kinetic energy. I use this formula here, kinetic energy equals one half times mass times speed squared. I did those calculations using my new speed that I have here. And this is what I came up with. Kinetic energy is measured in units of what we call joules, all energy is. So I, I used 68.89 joules when I walked, 2.72 joules when I did heel toe, and 277 approximately joules when I ran. So is there a relationship between kinetic energy and speed? I'm gonna pause and let you think about that for a second. data that we collected and me doing my activity and you doing yours. So hopefully you're seeing this relationship between speed and kinetic energy. So my greatest speed was when I ran, which was 3.33 meters per second, and the greatest amount of kinetic energy used was 277 joules. So hopefully you see that same relationship. So what does that mean? That means the greater the speed or the higher the speed, the more kinetic energy used. So my challenge to you now is, what if you were to take those motions and add weights to each one of those? Do you think the speed or the kinetic energy used would change? And if you do think it would, how would it change? Or can I challenge you, second challenge, can you do different motions? We did a walk, a heel toe walk, and a run. Are there other motions you can do to test this? I hope you had as much fun as I did today learning about kinetic energy and the relationship it has with speed.